Let's take a look at the trigger points involved with low back pain and sciatica. First, represented in blue, we have the quadratus lumborum trigger points, which as you can see can cause pain across the lower back and into the gluteal fold and into the hip regions. Next, we have the gluteus medius trigger points, seen here in red. These will cause pain across the iliac crest and into the gluteal fold regions. In purple, we have the gluteus maximus trigger points, which primarily cause pain in the gluteal region, but also into the sacrum. And next in green are the piriformis trigger points. These trigger points refer pain strongly to the greater trochanter and to the sacrum. In pink, we have the gluteus minimus trigger points. These two sets of trigger points can cause sciatica symptoms either down the back of the leg or the side of the leg. And in yellow, we have the iliopsoas trigger points, which as you can see are located on the front of the body, but refer a vertical pattern of pain along the lumbar spine. Next, in orange, we have the rectus abdominis trigger points, which will cause pain all the way across the iliac crest in the belt line region. And lastly, in red, we have the lumbar multifidi trigger points, which will cause pain on the lumbar spine itself or directly adjacent to it. Clinical findings for trigger points in the quadratus lumborum muscle are as follows. Dr. Travell refers to this muscle as the joker of low back pain because it is very frequently overlooked as a source of lower back pain. Clients may complain of pain in the iliac crest, sacroiliac joint, buttock, and groin regions. They will complain of a deep aching pain at rest, but is excruciating while in an upright, unsupported posture. Because of this, you'll often observe clients using their arms to support their upper body while walking or sitting. They may complain of a sharp, knife-like pain in their lower back. Rolling to either side while laying is extremely painful, something that therapists should be aware of when the client is on the table. Coughing or sneezing aggravates their pain. Pain can extend into the groin and or the scrotum. Chronic pain of this type frequently causes emotional depression and loss of vitality. Some factors that may activate or perpetuate trigger points in the quadratus lumborum muscle include automobile accidents, awkward lifting of heavy objects, stooping while twisted to reach for an object on the floor, putting on pants while standing, gardening, walking or running on a slanted surface, sleeping in a soft bed with a hammock-like sag, chilling of the muscle during sleep, and lower limb length inequality where one leg is shorter than the other. Clinical findings for gluteus medius trigger points. Dr. Travell calls this muscle the lumbago or low back pain muscle. Clients with active trigger points here will commonly complain of low back pain in the sacral, gluteal, and SI joint areas. The pain is typically associated with walking, and they may also have difficulty sleeping on the affected side. Some activating factors for gluteus medius trigger points include running, sudden falls or sports injuries, standing on one foot for a long period of time, walking or running in sand, true SI joint dysfunction, intramuscular injection, and sitting on a wallet. The clinical findings for gluteus maximus trigger points. 
Dr. Travell refers to the gluteus maximus as the swimmer's nemesis muscle. Clients with trigger points here may complain of pain and tenderness in the gluteal region, especially while sitting, aching pain while walking uphill and or in a bent forward position, and as its nickname implies, cramping during swimming. Some activating factors for gluteus maximus trigger points include swimming, a fall or near fall, impact trauma, prolonged uphill walking while leaning forward, an intramuscular injection as with a flu shot or booster shot, sitting on a thick wallet, and true SI joint dysfunction. Clinical findings for the piriformis muscle. Dr. Travell refers to the piriformis muscle as the double devil because trigger points in this muscle can cause pain in two ways. First, by the referred pain to the sacroiliac joint and or the hip, and second, by a condition known as piriformis syndrome, where a tense piriformis muscle compresses the sciatic nerve as it exits the pelvis, causing sciatica symptoms such as radiating pain, numbness, and tingling that travel down the leg to the foot. Some factors that may activate or perpetuate trigger points in the piriformis include the pain associated with true sacroiliac dysfunction, sudden foot slip, twisting sideways while bending and lifting, running, sexual positioning, impact trauma, car accident, chronic pelvic inflammatory disease, and hip replacement surgery. Clinical findings for gluteus minimus trigger points. Dr. Travell calls this muscle the pseudosciatica or side sciatica muscle. Clients will typically complain of pain in the buttock, hip, posterior and or lateral thigh and calf. They may also complain of hip pain while walking, which causes a limp, pain while rising from a chair. The pain may be constant and excruciating and is unaffected by positioning, similar to that of a disc herniation. Some activating factors for gluteus minimus trigger points include limping because of a lower leg or foot injury, walking or running on uneven ground, intramuscular injection, prolonged immobility, such as driving a car for long distances, true SI joint dysfunction, and sitting on a wallet. Here are the clinical findings for the iliopsoas trigger points. Dr. Travell refers to this muscle as the hidden prankster of lower back pain. Clients may complain of low back pain and thigh pain and a vertical distribution of lower back pain that is usually unilateral. The pain is worse upon standing. They also may complain of pain during bowel movements and the pain is exacerbated by any anti-gravity activity such as hanging from a bar. The pain usually diminishes in a recumbent position. Some factors that may activate and or perpetuate trigger points in the iliopsoas muscle include sudden falls, prolonged sitting with the hips flexed at 90 degrees or greater, sleeping in the fetal position, pregnancy, and old school or old fashioned sit-ups as opposed to crunches. Associated symptoms for trigger points in the rectus abdominis muscle are as follows. 
This muscle is commonly referred to as the six-pack muscle. Clients will complain of pain across the back, at the iliac crest, and or the thoracolumbar junction levels, pain at the xiphoid process and the lower abdominal regions, and symptoms associated with dysmenorrhea, abdominal cramping, abdominal distension, colic, diverticulosis, appendicitis, or gynecological disease. These symptoms may be secondary to underlying visceral disease or they could be completely unrelated. Some factors that may activate or perpetuate trigger points in the rectus abdominis muscle include new abdominal exercise programs, punching or kicking from a cardio kickboxing or a martial arts class, visceral disease such as peptic ulcer or intestinal parasite, abdominal surgery scars, impact trauma, constipation-related straining, extensive coughing, and emotional stress. Associated symptoms for trigger points in the lumbar multifidi group include tenderness and pain in the region of the spinous processes of the lumbar spine, bone or spine pain, occasionally the pain is referred to the abdominal region, trigger point induced tension in this muscle group may create or recreate articular dysfunctions between the vertebrae. When spinal manipulation techniques fail to produce any long-lasting benefits, it is frequently due to unaddressed trigger points in the lumbar multifidi muscle group. Activating and perpetuating factors for these trigger points include automobile accidents, unaddressed trigger point activity in the larger muscle groups that move the lumbar spine, articular dysfunction, and a distorted lumbar lordosis or scoliosis.